I went to Peter Gilchrist, an old friend, who was district attorney at that time, and said, we're thinking about office development on these two blocks. Tell me what I need to know from your vantage point. And he said, Dennis, what you need to know is that's where you go on Saturday night if you really want to get murdered. And yet, a million visitors a year entered uptown coming uh, east on West Trade Street off of I-77. How do you convert a street that has been important back beyond just neutral, but to positive? Well, I'll always remember the evening that Peter and Dee Dee McKay uh, called us to say, can we come by to tell you about an exciting project to form what we want to call the Queen's Table. And the idea will be to get enough couples so that we can put in each couple $1,000 to raise $100,000 to do a project, we hope, annually. Uh, public art was not something that tended to come about uh, at that juncture at the, at the public expense. And so it was logical that the Queen's Table would think they needed with private funds to step forward. And Dick Spangler and I were talking about where do we start? And we both remembered Jack. We knew Jack from school days. We knew of his reputation as a talented designer and artist. And they came to ask if I had any help to give them on ideas of something they could put downtown. You know, when you think about solving a problem, you really want to go to the most interesting or creative person that you know to ask them how to solve this problem. For the people who knew him, he was, he was uh, a natural source. And he was so wonderful, so receptive, so excited about this possibility. And I talked to him and they came back and they said, we like your ideas so much, we would like for you to be in charge of the project, which was a little bit of a shock. I didn't, didn't expect that. And it wasn't long before the idea of this wonderful wind sculpture came to be. So we were off and running. I got some phone calls from some members of our group who were not happy. And I was asked to come uptown to one of the corporate offices and answer a few questions about why we had done this in the area we had done it. And it turns out that some of our members felt that they would never go to that part of Charlotte. Why would they? It was just not a welcoming place, not a place at all where they would want to go. And had we not uh, missed our first chance to put something uh, as lovely as the sculpture in a place where more people would see it. Well, we were very firm that we thought it was in the right place. The key thing was he wanted a lot of moving components so that every time the wind blew, it would have a different feeling or a different pose or a different posture. And it was really exciting to see it spinning in different directions. Jack Pentis didn't necessarily define himself as an artist, as a sculptor. He was, he was a creative person. He was the person who just looked at whatever the uh, project was and tried to inject as much fun and tried to inject as much originality into it as possible. So you can say one panel, $4,000, two panels, $7,000, three panels, $10,000, total priceless. And history has proved that we are indeed right because the Gateway Center area of the city, out West Trade, is just 
a remarkable place and there's been a real transformation. And we like to think that the Queen's Table and this wonderful wind sculpture played a lead role in helping start that.